Born at Provident Hospital on Division Street, I've been part of the Sandtown family my entire life. From accompanying my father, a local funeral director who also served as president of the Funeral Directors and Morticians Association of Maryland, to selling Afro newspapers, to taking piano lessons at 919 North Carrollton Avenue. I've been a homeowner for the past 21 years in this historic West Baltimore community. Actually, my media career began back in 94 after I returned to college after a decade. I became the co-editor and ultimately the editor of the Sandtown Winchester Viewpoint newspaper and served the community for about 10 years. As editor of the paper, I had the sacred opportunity to cover a cornucopia of success stories of countless men, women, and youth who were doing great things in this 72 square block community. Thanks to former Mayor Kurt L. Schmoke and the late James Rouse, our community became the national jewel of neighborhood transformation. Up until 2000 or so, Sandtown Winchester had a ton of activity. We even had regular community meetings. However, a lot of that would change as the new mayor had shifted attention and resources to East Baltimore. Consequently, Sandtown was neglected to the point there was not even a community association anymore. Additionally, attrition played a part as many of the older generation died off. And then the Freddie Gray incident occurred where Sandtown Winchester became the focus of international media attention. All of a sudden, the world came to realize that the words I had been writing were in fact true. As editor, I cannot tell you how much I wrote about mass incarceration, vacant houses, closed wrecks, and poor schools. In 2002, I founded my own news outlet, bemorenews.com, to continue to tell the story from an indigenous perspective.